Hi, welcome to another video. So, I just read Kilo Code's post saying that Code Supernova is shutting down, and I wanted to go through it a bit because a lot of people use that model, including me at one point, and it's honestly a big change. They start the post by saying Code Supernova was the second most used model on the platform, which tracks. It's been there for a while and was kind of the go-to option for coding tasks if you didn't want to use the heavier or more expensive models. Now, since it's gone, they're suggesting a few alternatives. One free and one cheap, but good. The free one is Grok Code Fast 1, and the cheap one is GPT-5 Mini. So basically, you can either just use Grok alone or pair it with GPT-5 Mini for a hybrid setup. They tested both against Code Supernova using their standard benchmark, a job queue system written in TypeScript with Bun and SQLite. That's a solid choice for comparison, since it touches on async logic, persistence, and scheduling. The kind of stuff that's easy to mess up in automated code generation. Anyway, they found that Grok Code Fast one performed about the same as Code Supernova, but produced cleaner and shorter code. That's good to see, although cleaner is subjective. Depends on how you like your API structured. The example they gave makes sense, though. Code Supernova bundled everything into one payload parameter, while Grok separated the job type, data, and delay into their own parameters. That's actually a better API design, easier to extend and debug later. They also mentioned how Grok handles scheduling more simply, using milliseconds directly instead of requiring you to create date objects and convert between Unix and JS timestamps. That's one of those small things that don't sound like a big deal until you're debugging it at 2 a.m. They also said Grok automatically parses JSON on retrieval, while Supernova required you to manually parse it unless you were inside the internal flow. That's another quality of life improvement. It's not huge, but it saves you a few lines every time, and that adds up. Both models apparently delivered working implementations, but neither really cared about production features like performance optimization, which is normal for code mode outputs. That's what pushed them to test a hybrid setup. One model for planning, the other for implementation. This is where GPT-5 Mini comes in. They used it in architect mode to plan the whole system. And then Grok Code Fast, one executed it. It's kind of the same pattern we're seeing everywhere now. One model that does the thinking, another that just does the work. They say the combination worked way better. GPT-5 Mini came up with an actual plan that included retry mechanisms, indexes, migration support, lifecycle management, and even error handling. Then, Grok implemented that plan exactly. So, the hybrid result was much more structured than either model working alone. And the cost part is interesting. GPT-5 Mini costs 25 cents per M input tokens, and $2 per M output tokens, but with caching, it drops to $0.25 cents per M input tokens. So, depending on how much text you're feeding it, the total cost of generating a whole architecture plan can come out to under a cent. Combined with Grok being free right now, that's basically a zero-cost setup for small to medium tasks. They also mention how the hybrid setup took a bit longer which is expected since it's multi-step, but the results were noticeably better. And yeah, that makes sense. When you give the coding model a plan to follow, it doesn't waste tokens thinking, it just executes. That usually leads to cleaner results and fewer retries. I think the key takeaway they're trying to make is that it's not about replacing Code Supernova one-to-one, it's about splitting the work differently. 
instead of one model doing everything halfway well, you use two smaller ones that each do their part better. They even list what kind of developer tasks fit each mode. For smaller edits, like add catching, fix a validation bug, or refactor this function, Grok Code Fast 1 is enough. It's fast and predictable. But for bigger stuff, like build a notification system or design an API, they recommend using GPT-5 Mini for planning first. That's smart. It mirrors how actual developers work. Plan first, then implement. I like that they made that distinction because a lot of AI coding setups still try to do everything in one go. And that's why the results feel inconsistent. Having a split between planning and execution actually makes the workflow more controllable. Then they talk about pricing again. And there's a promo running. If you top up $10, you get $30 worth of credits. That's a nice move to get people to try GPT-5 Mini without worrying about costs. It's also not locked into just one model. It applies to everything on Kilo. The rest of the post covers some small details about how to access both models and a quick mention of their upcoming AMA on Discord. I think that's good timing. People will probably have a lot of questions about how to set up the hybrid flow properly. What I find interesting is that they're calling this a spec-driven or planning-driven workflow, which is something I've talked about before. Except this time, it actually seems a bit more practical. You don't need some big third-party tool. It's all built into Kilo with the architect and code modes. If you've used Code Supernova in the past, this might actually feel like a natural upgrade path. You just have to get used to the two-step process. First, let GPT-5 Mini think through the architecture, then hand that plan off to Grok. Once you get into the rhythm of it, it's basically the same effort as before, but with better results. Overall, the post feels like more than just an announcement. It's not, Supernova's gone, sorry. It's more like, here's what's next, and it might actually be better. And honestly, from the examples they shared, it does look like an improvement, especially if you're building mid-size projects or just need reliable one-shot code generation. So yeah, if you were relying on Code Supernova, I'd say it's worth testing Grok Code Fast one first. Start small, maybe something you've built before, and see how it compares. And if you find it lacking in planning, then bring GPT-5 Mini into the mix. It's good to see Kilo actually benchmarking and not just pushing a new model for the sake of it. The results they shared are specific line counts, API design, even JSON handling. That kind of transparency helps developers make informed choices, and I appreciate that. All right, that's about it for this one. I just wanted to go through the post line by line and give my take. The shift away from Code Supernova might sound bad at first, but the alternatives look solid, especially for the price. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.